Hi guys, welcome to this month's episode of Stembox Tutorials, where this month we are going to be learning about bridges. And sure, bridges are pretty scary for a lot of people like my dad. Sorry Bruce, you need to get over it. But we're going to be learning about the engineering principles that go into making bridges such a sturdy and important part of our infrastructure. Let's get started. To understand what makes bridges so strong, we're going to explore the different shapes involved in bridge building. So the first shape we've taken is a line. We've clipped two popsicle sticks together, and what we can try and do is rotate around the joint and see how easy and flexible that is. Not a very good bridge structure, not very sound. But then if we move to a square, we might think, oh, more, more sides, more angles, this has to be stronger. So if we take the opposite sides that are parallel and try to move them, we can rotate that pretty easily. If I take sides that are next to each other, that's also pretty easy. So not the most sound structure as well. But the triangle, okay, this is pretty cool. You cannot rotate any one of these sides next to each other because all three sides of this triangle are absorbing the forces exerted upon them from my hands. You cannot change the shape of the triangle without making one of these legs longer or shorter or just breaking the popsicle stick in general. This is why bridge builders use triangles in so many of their designs. So now let's see how we can build this into our first round of bridge making. In our second experiment, we're going to explore how different shapes and surface areas can affect the strength of your bridge. So to get started, gather six pieces of construction paper you can find in your box, lay two hot dog style end to end with a little bit of overlap, and go ahead and just get a really long piece of your tape and just tape them together. This shape is your first shape in the series, your flat landscape shape number one. What you're gonna do is repeat this two more times so that you have a total of three long pieces of paper. Then what you'll do is you'll fold one of them into a tube and you can secure this at several points on the paper with tape or rubber bands. And your third shape is going to be this M or a W upside down. Um, just do this by folding your paper in half, hot dog style, and then in quarters on each side. And that's how you make that shape. So to test these different shapes, what we're going to do is you need to find either two big textbooks that are of, same, of the same height, or you can use some old stem boxes you have around the house. So I'm going to take some stem boxes, and I'm just going to place them close enough together so that my paper can hang on the edges without falling in the middle. If you want to test these bridges strengths and quantify how well they do against each other, what you can do is you can grab something at home, say coins, maybe they're the same size, a bunch of pennies. What I have today are paper clips, and add them one by one to the middle of your bridge until the bridge collapses. Just keep track of how many you're adding. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and the bridge collapses. The next piece for us to measure would be our tubular bridge, but it's kind of hard to stack paper clips on this or anything solid without it falling off, so we should make a bucket for it. Have a parent help you with this part, but basically take the cup in your box and a pair of scissors, your parent should do this part for you, and make holes in the side. A piece of twine, you can do this part after your parents have used the scissors and the knife part and thread some through the holes and tie them off. And these can be adjustable knots. You can adjust them for the different bridges we're going to use later. Now that you've made your bucket, you can just slide it onto your tube. Of course, from a scientific standpoint, this is not accurately measuring since we didn't use a bucket on our flat surface, but I don't think it takes much to tell us that that one wasn't very strong. So anyways, we have a bucket and now piece by piece, we can just keep adding until this bridge collapses. So just record that number at home. We won't do that today because we don't want to spoil the surprise for you guys. And for our last bridge, same idea. You might want to loosen the paper a little bit or the string, but this bridge should sit like this and you'll want it to be a little bit longer, but you're going to add piece by piece more weight to this bucket until this bridge collapses as well. In our third experiment, we're going to be experimenting with how the same shape applied several times over can strengthen a bridge or a surface. So for researchers today, what they're exploring is how you can take one flat surface, say, and make it into something stronger and smaller, but multiply that smaller shape over and over again to achieve a stronger material. But that can also be applied to what we're doing today in bridges. 
So for this experiment, you need six pieces of construction paper. We're going to roll them like this into about a one to two inch diameter, but just try to make them consistent. If they're all two inch or they're all one inch, that's fine. Go ahead and tape them at three different points. You will end up with six tubes like this. And now what you need to do is find two chairs and you'll need your little bucket, something to measure your weight with. So for us, it was paper clips. If you have a roll of coins, you should get those and we're ready to start. So to test our tubular bridge, our nanotechnology, we're going to compare it to what a flat bridge looks like first. So gather six pieces of construction paper in your box, lay them flat across the bridge you've just set up, and hang your bucket from the middle. You can already tell that these are kind of weak and they might not hold as much, but it's worth testing. If you need to, you can move your boxes closer together to offer more support. But we're going to slowly add 100 paper clips to this bucket and see when it breaks. So I'm just gonna do a handful at a time to save us some time filming. Oh no. And that's all it could hold. So now we're gonna test this with our tube bridges. We're going to start adding different amounts of paper clips to test the strength of this bridge and how much it can hold. So I already know from previously testing that my bridge can already start to hold 100 paper clips. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those. I'm going to keep adding paper clips though because I wanna see how much it'll take to break this bridge. Thank you all so much for watching our first three experiments from this month's box. Stay tuned because next we're going to be building suspension bridges. Can't wait to see you there. Thanks. This is still a very strong bridge. So maybe we switch down. Because I know we all want to see something break. To two. Two is also very strong. Um, let's try one. This is interesting. One is also very strong. So keep adding weight to this until you can break it. We are having a hard time in studio breaking, so we're gonna leave that up to you guys.